What do you wish to become, a believer or an inquirer? Wondering what the difference is? Both of these look the same. But no, guys, with each comes its perks. Becoming a believer might bring you to peace of mind, but devoting yourself to finding the truth can impact entire generations. As usual, we've brought another life-changing lesson to swear by. Today, we're decoding Nietzsche's unapologetic rule to become an inquirer and explore the pursuits of truth and ownership. Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher, classical scholar, and culture critic, was one of the most prominent modern thinkers. He is known for his radical critique of Western religion, morality, and philosophy. He also wrote many books, such as Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Beyond Good and Evil, etc. And his book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, is where our source of inspiration has been picked from. Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra is a literary masterpiece, and in one intriguing chapter, Zarathustra surprises his disciples. He advises them to go their own way, be ashamed of him, and even question if he might have deceived them. Now that's quite a withdrawal from the usual sage wisdom, isn't it? And this is the essence of our today's lesson. Through the sage's imaginary character, Nietzsche tries to make us realize the importance of following no one but oneself. Imagine a young seeker, desperate for knowledge, who finds a wise farmer after an endless search and sitting in the company of many learned men. At first, the student engages in philosophical debates, but he becomes a genuine believer in the farmer's wisdom over time. He experiences a shift from being an inquirer to a believer. So what do you guess would have happened? They'd have established a teacher-pupil relationship. No, what happens next is unexpected. The farmer, sensing the shift from inquiry to blind belief, decides it's time for the student to leave. Why? Though a simple man, that farmer was way ahead of many acknowledged men at that time. He did not want the young boy to become a stationary and start believing his words instead of research of his own. The farmer uses a map analogy to illustrate a crucial point and make him realize what good becoming an inquirer brings him. Just like a map represents a shadow of reality, our memories are mere shadows of the truth. If you follow someone else's map, you're living according to their memories, not the truth itself. Now let's connect the dots back to Nietzsche. In a letter to his sister, he wrote, If you wish to strive for a piece of soul and pleasure, then believe. If you wish to be a devotee of truth, then inquire. Zarathustra's urging his followers to leave is a call for them to be inquirers, not blind believers. The farmer's wisdom in our story reflects Nietzsche's concern. You might think, what is wrong with following someone else's map? Someone who inspires us by planting seeds of wisdom. But blindly following someone else's map can lead to a disconnect from reality. It might be comfortable, but it's a comfort built on shaky foundations. Nietzsche doesn't want followers. He desires individuals who construct their own maps of reality. Think about it. If you follow someone else's map, you risk losing your unique perspective. What if their map is flawed? You'll be lost with them. But here's the crucial part. If you learn to construct your own map, you can contribute to the collective understanding of reality. It's a call for individuals to come together as equals, each with their unique perspectives. Nietzsche stresses us to be inquirers, constantly challenging, doubting, and seeking our truths. Inquirers bring actual value through their unique perspectives fostering a space for independent verification and correction. It's a call to cultivate our personal understanding rather than relying on borrowed wisdom. Let's reflect on Zarathustra's stance one more time. Why does Zarathustra tell his followers to leave? It's not to push them away, it's to set them free. Free from the confines of blind belief and towards a liberating path of independent thought. In Nietzsche's view, True companionship comes from individuals who forge their own paths and can share their diverse maps of reality. Surprisingly enough, Socrates had the same idea to begin with, as he aspired to change the way his followers think. With this simple lesson, no one can construct for you the bridge upon which precisely you must cross the stream of life, no one but you alone. Here again, Nietzsche has tried to convey the same message in different words. It says the bridge that provides you with the medium to pass life's stream is your chance to stand out. Build it by your logic, your philosophy, and the design in your mind. It's only then that you can land the destination you've been longing for in your head. As we unwrap today's exploration inspired by Nietzsche's profound insights, let's reflect on the power of being inquirers. 
Let's cultivate our maps of reality, share our perspectives, and embrace the richness that comes from diverse, independent thought. Nietzsche's words echo through time, reminding us that the pursuit of truth is a journey best undertaken with open minds and individual exploration. So until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and most importantly, keep seeking your own truth. Stay curious.